If you've ever wondered how mini sets are developed, our next series of videos is going to give you some really interesting insights. We'll be taking a look at the next Pathfinder battle set, Impossible Lands, which is releasing alongside the Pathfinder book by the same name, which we reviewed in a video that you can watch up there in the eye in the corner of your screen. As always, Pathfinder minis are also perfectly usable in your D&D games as well, but check out the Impossible Lands book review if you've never played Pathfinder because it is a really fun jumping on point. Now, this is basically a full WizKids set like we're used to, but this time they're being packaged in these preset boxes, so no random boosters this time. Why did they do that? Well, we are going to find out because with the Impossible Lands video reviews, we're going to be joined by Paizo's mini master, Mark Moreland, who kindly agreed to answer all of my burning questions. And after all these years doing this, I still have a lot of questions. And we'll see if we can get some scoops out of him as well about what's coming on down the pike. There are six boxes at all. We're going to start off with the Accursed Constructs because I love my robots. And I think this set will be really useful in my upcoming Outlaws of Alkenstar campaign. Campaign. And many thanks to WizKids for sending it to us to review. I'll show you the minis in the set and then we'll chat with Mark. So put on your clockwork hat because it is time to take a look at Impossible Lands Accursed Constructs. Before we jump in, if you're looking to try out an innovative new TTRPG, our sponsor Hit Point Press has a fantastic one that I've gotten to play and now you can try it out for free. It is called Shift. It is a minimal role character centric game system. Instead of ability scores, your talents are represented by individualized traits that have an associated die from a D4 up to a D12. A roll of a one, two, or three is a success no matter which die is rolled. So for your best traits, you're gonna be rolling a D4 and for your worst one, you'll be rolling a d12. But a crit success or a crit failure on any roll means that your associated die shifts up or down. So if you get a four on that d4, that will be a crit failure. That die will become a d6 until you rest or recover in another way, like by rolling a one on it. It is an extremely dynamic system that makes every die roll feel electric. You can play in any world, but they include an adventure that has a wonderful Bioshock feel to it. If you want to try it out, just visit the link in the doohickey down below to download the free quick start guide and let me know what you think of it in the comment section. That is Shift by Hit Point Press. Let's start with the Automaton Warrior here. These minis are unnumbered and interestingly, they're not based on creatures from the new Impossible Lands book. They are creatures that you'll find in the Impossible Lands region, but the stat blocks are from older books. The Automaton Warrior is from Guns and Gears, which introduced the Automaton as a rare playable ancestry. So this could be your PC mini. And let me tell you, some of the ancestry feats for the Automaton automaton are wild. Let's move from ancient high-tech automatons to contemporary clockwork constructions that you would find in abundance in places like Alkenstar, the land where technology is king because magic cannot be relied upon. First, we have these two clockwork soldiers from Bestiary 3. You'll find these soldiers working as city defenders. Now, technically, clockworks were also an ancient technology, arguably perfected by Zen, the first emperor of ancient Thassalon. Unlike automatons, clockworks do not have souls. And Interestingly, while the stat block for the level 6 Clockwork Soldier is from Bestiary 3, the design of these is different from the art in that book. The Clockwork Mage here, on the other hand, does jive with her entry in the Bestiary 3 book. The Mage is a level 9 construct able to cast arcane spells up to 5th level, including classics like Black Tentacles and Cone of Cold. It's all powered by an arcane wand embedded in its chest. If someone is skillful enough, they can pluck the wand directly out of it during combat, rendering it unable to cast anything but cantrips. And they gain a sweet wand with whatever second level spell it had cast last. Finally, we have the advanced Quidditch ball known as the Clockwork Spy. They're tiny creatures sent out to do basically corporate espionage. So the mini here is technically upscaled to small size. I would imagine it being closer to a baseball size in quote real life. They do have a level negative one stat block, but it's not made for combat. If it's struck, it is much more likely to self-destruct, lest it gets traced back to its original owner. This set has two large size minis, starting with the Calicang here, who is a humanoid and decidedly not a construct. 
Kalakangs are long-lived solitary creatures who feel a deep inherent drive to protect and guard. Their origins are steeped in mystery, but legend holds that they're the creation of an ancient Vudrani god made to serve as protectors for worldly goods. And that's what they do. And they do it well with their level 12 stat block. Our second large-sized four-armed guardian is actually a construct, a sword keeper to be precise. Their chest contains a single weapon to display and protect. They can project force energy based on copies of those weapons into their hands to use to defend themselves. By default, it holds a plus one striking, disrupting longsword, but you can slot in whatever weapon you like. Great way to make your party earn that next weapon of choice. Finally, we have our huge-sized fossil golem. This mini definitely walks that line between fearsome and absolutely ridiculous. Fossil golem creators just throw together old megafauna fossilized bones and whatever arrangement seems the scariest. And then they bring it to life with a limited ability to rearrange its component bones to favor its reach over its speed if it wants to. It can also fossilize its foes if it gets a good bite in and considering the number of mouths it has, well, I hope your party has some good anti-petrification ability. All right, let's go ahead and bring in Mark Moreland, Paizo's Director of Brand Strategy, to learn how this set came to life. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. I was hoping that you could start off by just kind of talking about what you do at Paizo. Yes, yeah, so, well, for many years, I've, I've now been at Paizo for uh, about 12 and a half years, um, so I've worn a lot of hats. Uh, in that time, uh, I started as the developer of the Pathfinder Society Organized Play Program, um, and then moved on to develop um, the modules line, uh, the Pathfinder campaign setting line. These were all for Pathfinder First Edition, um, as well as Back Matter for Adventure Paths. Uh, and then, at about 2016 or 2017, I transitioned into franchise management um, and now um, brand strategy. Um, so I I sort of work as the liaison between the creative team who are making the books uh, and our marketing team, our sales team, um, and uh, especially our licensees uh, to ensure that we're, um, you know, exposing the brand in as many different mediums as possible, whether that's books or uh, VTT, um, uh, you know, VTT compatibility or uh, it, plastic um, and uh, and so then a, a, I work with with everyone to ensure that we have uh, that we're not only filling those holes uh, but that we're doing so in a way that really um, elevates the brands and and is consistent uh, across the board so that our minis actually look like our art and vice versa when I hear your name I always think back to the the Paizo blogs that you used to write about all the minis you still do you have kind of gone back and done that how how long have you been associated with the mini part of your work um, over well, there? When I when I took over as franchise management uh, franchise manager, so um, I think the first set that I wrote blogs for was probably the Kingmaker set, um, and the first uh, one that I actually designed the set list for, I want to say was. Um, Ruins of Laxwall, maybe? I don't even remember what order they all came out with. So whichever set was right after Kingmaker, I think was the first one I did. Um, uh, but it's all a blur now. I've worked on so many and, you know, even before I was making the sets, I was certainly um, nerding out over them and collecting them and trying to find places to store all of them in my uh, very overcrowded uh, living space. I definitely understand that part of it too. Well, let me ask you about Impossible Lands here because this is something new for you guys. You're getting away, for, at least for this set, from the booster boxes into these kind of preset boxes. Can you talk to me about that, that decision and what that means for you guys? Um, yeah, that decision largely came from WizKids. Um, the pandemic and supply chain issues um, meant that the economics of doing blind boxes um, didn't, didn't work for them uh, this time. And I don't know whether that was a production issue or a shipping issue um, or, uh, you know, a, a distribution issue. I don't know where exactly in the, in the, the chain it happened, but, um, but they came back to us. We had originally designed this as a full blind box set and they said, Hey, can we break this up into, um, into, you know, sort of thematic, um, non-randomized boxes. And we said, you know, 
sure, you guys, you guys know what you need to do to sell the product, so uh, we'll help you do that. And so we worked with them to sort of break things up into, th into uh, mini, mini sets that sort of made sense together from a thematic uh, standpoint or to ensure that you weren't getting a whole bunch of small minis all together and nothing big and cool looking. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's that's sort of how we we got here. And the next set after this will will continue this tradition. Um, and then I think after that we're moving back to um, to randomized blind um, blind minis. But that those sets are all still in process. So just like this one changed after we initially started design on it, um, th those could too. So don't you know? Don't quote me on that. I say on camera. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's th this set and the next one. Expect expect this sort of new form factor. And I'm I'm interested to see what what fans think about being able to get exactly the minis that they that they're seeking instead of hoping that they get the one that they want from a blind box. Yeah, you anticipated my next question. Everybody wants to know what to expect next from, from Paizo in the Pathfinder Battles line. So uh, I don't think anything has been announced about what the sets are, correct? Yeah, I don't I don't think so. I mean, we're, we work so far ahead that even though I'm the one who's, you know, in my role as, as uh, director of brand strategy, I'm the one who's sort of coordinating with WizKids to actually make the announcement. Um, I often forget whether I've done that or just approved the paint masters or where we're at in the process. I will say the next set, um, we've announced the book and or books that it is tied to. Um, but what those are, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to scoop, scoop ourselves with that announcement quite yet. There are so many books that have been announced, uh, so people can maybe narrow it down a little bit, but maybe not too much. Uh, I have my suspicions, but I'll ask you that for one of our, our future videos here in the Impossible Lands uh, line here. But let me ask you about Accursed Constructs in particular here. So, is you know, in the process of transforming this from a booster box set, a blind box set, to these predefined sets, um, did the actual list of minis change to fit these themes, or did you more or less keep the same way? It, it stayed it stayed very similar i think that we had a few huge s figures that that changed um and i want to say we added a second single figure um so all of these all of these were already in the set um you know when we were designing the blind the blind booster set before it was broken up into the into the non-random uh sets um we didn't yet have any of the reference art for the impossible lands book that you've got on display there so we knew we wanted to do something that would support that release but we had to do it in a way that we could get out ahead you know the production time on these is over a year and so um our books generally go to the printer for a hardcover about four months before the street date so impossible lands was nowhere near being done uh, for us to send the reference so um so so i had to look at the thematic um elements of the different nations in the impossible lands uh and sort of pick things from existing sources that we had reference art for and that it, it ideally had never um been been cast to plastic before and um and sort of fill out the set list uh with those so in this case these are the these are the uh, constructs the golems um that are uh, very much linked to the nation of Nex, um, which is sort of the high magic, you know, crazy. I think actually that the Sphinx on the cover of the um, Impossible Lands book is is Nex uh, of the of the nations that are covered in the book. That's the that's the one that um, where these these come from. With I think the exception of the the big centerpiece there, the the fossil golem. Um, I think. Um, while you could technically have one wherever you know how to cast, create golem, um, or create construct, whatever, uh, whatever spell you have to cast, I just make minis. I don't, I don't do the rules anymore. Um, the wh wherever you you could cast that, you could have one of these. But it, but any giant 
thing made of bones um, also really fits thematically into the um, the nation of Geb, which is the undead ruled uh, nation that's been in a millennia long war with with Nyx. So um, this sort of covers a lot of that region um, and gives you a wide variety of uh, of of constructs um, to use in your games, um, including some that I think you can play as as a character. Um, mm -hmm. Is this the one with the automatons? Again, I don't yes. remember. What, mm -hmm. I don't remember what got put into which sets, um, but uh, yeah, one of our mm -hmm. goals with each of the of the boxes was to try and give you something that, as a player, you could use uh, to represent your character. And as we introduce more and more. Um, uh, non-traditional uh, character ancestries in Pathfinder, uh, it, it gets harder and harder for uh, players to find a mini to use at the table. And so uh, the uh, the automatons uh, first appeared in Guns and Gears uh, about a year ago. And, uh, and so we've been looking for an opportunity to get, uh, get automatons uh, in plastic so people can use them uh, to, to be their character. And not only that, but you also have the inventor and their uh, construct. I forget what they call their, you know, their little robot that Warp. they can build. To go. Warp yeah, is was the name the, of the, yeah. the iconic one, right? And, yes, uh, yes. But your players may build, well, you know, a variety of different little constructs to go along with them. So, you know, maybe something like the, the Clockwork Spy in here, you know, can be inspiration for people who want to yeah, have I mean, a little inventor. That, is, that is the, uh, yeah, the Clockwork Spy is the uh, fam improved familiar level um, you know, uh, clockwork uh, creature. So uh, it's definitely, we were definitely thinking of that, of things that players can use and not just GMs, because obviously that um, that big bone golem on there is, or fo fossil golem is totally a GM uh, thing, unless you're a crazy mad scientist character. Um, but uh, yeah, we wanted to ensure that the, the, there was a little something in each of these for everyone. And speaking of PC minis, uh, we're going to come back here next time and talk about the, the Heroes and Villains set, if you don't mind joining us for that video as well. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Mark. Impossible Lands and Cursed Constructs is available now for between 70 and 80 bucks. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. I also want to know what you think of this release strategy. You are getting fewer minis for the money, but you know exactly what you're getting. For 80 bucks, you could also get roughly five booster boxes of their last release, Bestiary Unleashed, which would give you 20 random minis of various sizes. We can attest to the absolute skyrocketing prices of worldwide shipping and the inconsistent nature of production in China due to COVID, which by the way, is exploding in China right now, so 2023 might not get much better. We'll be seeing those rising prices across the board as we have them. So it sounds like we will be getting back to the booster box system next year from Paizo, but I'm curious to hear what you think about all this. I know a lot of folks were not a fan of random boosters, so I wonder what you think. Let me know down below. And don't forget to check out Ship from Hit Point Press at the link in the video down below for a fun free new game to play during the holidays. And many thanks to Mark for taking the time to talk to us today. We'll have much more with him over the coming days and weeks as we go through this entire Impossible Lands release. So be sure you're subscribed to see all that and liking our videos helps other people find us. You can always find me on Mastodon, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can also find me on TikTok, which I'm starting to make content for. It's going to be more short form, useful content for game masters to players, personal off-the-cuff reactions to what's going on in the TTRPG world, and what it's like behind the scenes for us as content creators and writers for both 5e and Pathfinder, because it is getting crazy out there right now. But until next time, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.